Welcome to this short tutorial on how to set up MS-DOS games on the Ambonic RG406V using Gamma OS. Don't worry, this also works on the stock OS. I just prefer Gamma OS because the mouse works properly in RetroArch. Create a folder for your DOS games and copy all the games into it, they must be in zip format. Optionally, you can manually download thumbnails from LaunchBox website. Open RetroArch and download DOSBox Pure Core. In the settings, download the DOS platform for DigiShow. Then point DigiShow to your MS-DOS games folder on the SD card and sync it. Then you can load up all the thumbnails. I disabled the scraper because I've prepared my own 3x4 vertical thumbnails. You'll now see your games appear with thumbnails. I'd like to sort platforms by number, so since I just added DOS, I renamed the short name to a number to keep things organized. Games should launch directly from the main executable file. Pressing the Home button takes you to the quick menu in RetroArch. Long pressing Home exits the game. Once you've tested a game, you can set the default executable by pressing right on the D-pad. For some games, I prefer to use a Bluetooth mouse. Not all games will run straight away. Some require installation or setup. Let's try it. Warcraft 2. OK, that didn't work. Let's try Setup. Still nothing. Let's try install. No luck. Some games need additional CD files for installation. Use those. In this case, on top of the menu, we insert the Tides of Darkness CD. That loads the installation files. And now the game works. If you don't have a mouse, you can map the left analog stick as a mouse. Make sure to save the remap for this game only. tweak a few settings, and voila. Some games need more control customization. For example, in Carmageddon, you need to use numeric keys. Click the left thumbstick to bring up the on-screen keyboard, then using L and R, swap to the control settings. Remap the directions to the corresponding keys. In other games, you can create shortcuts. Like in June 2, I mapped L1 and L2 to the attack and move commands. Some games have long intros before reaching the main menu. You can use the quick menu to create a save state in slot 0. That way you can skip intros and jump straight into the main menu next time. If a game runs too fast, try emulating older PC specs. Setting it to 486 usually works well. Last but not least, and for that authentic feel, I use a CRT shader on all my games. I use a lightweight shader called Fake Lotte's Mini Shader, optimized for low-res devices. I saved it globally, so it applies everywhere. And once you've gone through setting up each game, let me tell you, it's going to happen. What's going to happen? Something wonderful. Ah, look at that. It all comes full circle. <laughs> Old favourites, new surprises, and a few I still haven't beaten after all these years. Back then I could only dream of taking a 486 on the go. Now it fits in my pocket and the games I grew up with are always just a tap away. Thanks for joining me on this little journey. Until next time, ta-ta for now.